Hey folks, we're going to try a different format for today's video and jump right into Quicken to look at some of the most useful reports the tool has to offer. We'll discuss how to use each report and some of the common settings that will help you get the most out of them. Now, here's a list of the reports we're going to cover today, and I've timestamped the video so you can jump directly to any one of them. We're going to focus on the out-of-the-box reports, but we'll talk about some of the tweaks that you can use to make them your own. Now, this list is based solely on my opinion and what I find useful, so your mileage may vary, but if you do have a favorite report that you don't see here, let me know in the comments below. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first two reports on our list are comparison reports. Now, what are comparison reports, you ask? Well, good question. Comparison reports, as the name suggests, allows you to compare one time period to another. Pretty straightforward. So coming in at number five is going to be the comparison report current spending versus average spending by category. Now, this report allows us to compare your spending for a selected time period. We're going to use the month for this example uh, versus the average spending in those categories over previous time periods. So the very first thing I'm gonna do with this report, I'm gonna set the period to last month. And I'm gonna do that because it's still pretty early in the month right now and I don't have a ton of data. So using last month will work a little bit better. Uh, and I'm gonna compare it to the average of the last, let's use six months for our example. Now, one thing I always do with pretty much every report is I'll go into the customize menu and over to the advanced tab. And I like to hide external transfers and I also like to hide all sub accounts. And I do that because it makes the report look a lot cleaner and you can always drill into the reports as well if you want to get further detail. So why would you use this report? For me, it's actually really good at looking at long term trends. So think like quarterly or year over year. I actually don't recommend using it for monthly data like we have set up right now, but I chose to run it this way so I can show you why. So in this example, you can quickly see that our auto spending is way higher when compared to the last few months. But for me, that's actually expected because it includes my annual car insurance payment that's made every February. For me, I have a number of annual or quarterly bills that can throw off monthly averages. For example, I pay my property taxes in June and December. I pay my financial advisor quarterly. I pay my auto insurance in May, my homeowners in July. Obviously, if you're just looking at the average of the last X months, depending on when some of those big purchases happen, it can really skew the data and it doesn't really make sense. So that ultimately leaves us three options for this report. First is we filter out those categories like auto insurance and property taxes uh, in the report settings and completely ignore those for our spending trend analysis. The second is we look at the data in longer time increments, like year over year to understand the macro trends of our spending. And that's actually the way that I prefer to use this report. And the third is we just use a different report. Now, the good news is the number four report in our list does address this issue. The income and expense comparison by category report is similar to that last report, but with one key difference. It doesn't have a graph. Now, that's not it, although it actually doesn't. The big difference here is the flexibility we have when choosing the time periods to compare to. Their last report locked us into comparing a time period with the average of the X previous time periods. This allows us to directly compare any time period with any other time period. I mean, I could compare last month to all of last year if I wanted, but I don't. For me, the most useful way to leverage this report is to compare a time period to the same time period the prior year. So think of this month compared to this month last year. I usually will look at an entire month or the month to date to understand how I did or how I'm tracking respectively compared to that same time a year ago. Now, just like before, I prefer to hide my subcategories and transfers. And next, I select the time period I'm interested in, like month to date. And for the compare, I'll use the filter to choose the prior year period. Boom. Now I can easily see that I've already spent roughly $200 more on groceries so far compared to last year. Damn you, inflation. A few quick notes. First, this report also includes income, whereas the last one didn't. So that's an added bonus. Another thing to keep in mind that's true for all reports, not just this one, is that when you save your own versions of reports and then add more categories or accounts down the road, for example, maybe I add a pet insurance category. The next time I run this report, that new category is not automatically included. I need to go back into the settings and add it. This can be a pain and easy to forget, but you know, it is what it is. Moving on to number three, capital gains. 
Under the investing menu is the capital gains report. Now, if you don't hold investments, you can clearly skip this one. But if you do, then this is a great place to keep in mind for tax planning. The report itself is very straightforward. It will list out gains you have in taxable brokerage accounts. You can sort through the data in different ways, short term versus long term, or even by account, like my account versus my wife's account. I typically look at this report at least say monthly and certainly more often once we get near the end of the year. My goal is to always take gains strategically. And this really is a topic for its own video, but the short version is by knowing where you stand throughout the year helps you make informed trading decisions on taking gains or losses to minimize your tax liability. I'll also use the investment income report along with this one since that one includes things like dividends and interest. Together, they help paint the full picture on what your taxable income is gonna be at the end of the year. Okay, so moving on. Number two, net worth. Need I say more? Every morning I wake up and before I feed my children, I pull up my net worth report. It's better than coffee. Kidding, kidding, obviously. This is not something you typically look at daily, weekly, or even monthly, because honestly, unless you're making money hand over fist, it's really not gonna move that quickly. For me though, it's a motivational tool. Checking in every once in a while and seeing how my good habits and discipline are paying off further reinforces my commitment to make smart financial decisions. The report itself is really straightforward. The only thing I change is the interval. I prefer to look at it quarterly because it draws a better visual because you have more data points, but you could even go monthly if you don't have a ton of history in the app. Again, the longer you use this, the more interesting the report becomes because it shows a long-term financial journey in one image. So here's an example. Uh, you can see me in my early 20s with literally nothing to my name for quite a few years. Then all of a sudden in 2008, I bought my first home and you can see I later sold it in early 2013. Now this is where you can see I was all cash, living with my parents for a few months and then on to my second home purchase, which I held on to for a few years until I met my wife and we moved into a rental together and lived virtually debt free for a little while. The last few years is where it gets really interesting. A new job combined with more assets invested shows how quickly things can add up. Again, for me, this helps provide that motivation to stay the course. Okay, now we're on to number one. Drum roll, please. The Almighty Income and Expense Report. Now we saw the comparison version of this report earlier, but I prefer to run this one year to date, broken down by month, and of course, hiding transfers and sub accounts like we've done everywhere else. I use this report every time I sit down to do my finances, and especially at the end of the month when I wanna review everything and see if it went according to plan. It helps me understand if I'm executing my financial strategies correctly by measuring my income and my expenses and course correct when I'm straying from my goals. This is also the report I use to help forecast my cash flow based on past expenditures and known expenses. You can check out my video on Quickinverse Excel for more details on how that works. The report itself is fairly self-explanatory. With the filters I mentioned, you'll have a monthly view of your income and expenses. And of course you can customize it if you need to include or exclude specific categories or accounts. And on that note, stay tuned for a video coming up on custom categories. I'll discuss the pros and cons to using them and some of the tips and tricks to get your category list up the way you want it. So that does it for today. As always, I wanna thank you for watching. And if you do have any questions or comments, well, you know what to do.